While I'm waiting for some parts to arrive for the REN computer, I thought I would take the opportunity to give a very brief introduction to a major project that I've got coming up. If you've watched some of my previous videos, then you'll know that uh, I, have, I have a history of um, dealing with repairing and renovating old IBM machines. And in the uh, late 70s and through the 80s, I had a lot of access to the uh, intermediate IBM machines. Now, IBM started really with uh, large mainframe computers. These are the sort of the huge floor standing room size machines that uh, you've seen in sci fi movies with the big tape reels. And uh, in fact, if you go and look at um, Curious Mark's channel, you'll see that uh, he has a lot of good videos on that type of machine. Uh, incidentally, I'm sorry about the weird lighting in here. Uh, this machine is uh, way too heavy to get into my uh, workshop as it is here. It weighs around 50 kilograms. Um, it's not particularly big, but it is really heavy. Um, so I'm having to film this in my office uh, and there is no good lighting in here, so apologies for the, um, the poor lighting. But as I mentioned in a previous video, I used to uh, collect and, and pick up and acquire old faulty IBM machines. It was mostly IBMs I was interested in at the time. I was in a position where I could get hold of uh, old faulty equipment including machines like this. Now generally speaking the way IBM went about uh, maintaining and servicing these machines is they were really a collection of modules that the uh, IBM service department referred to as field replaceable units. So that would include the monitor assembly, the keyboard assembly, the disk drives, the power supply and the card rack. Uh, all of those were generally swapped out in uh, module form. And that meant that the workshops that were repairing these rapidly acquired big piles of non-functional units and they quite often didn't want to spend the time, money and effort in repairing those so they would uh, generally throw them in a skip or scrap them. There wasn't the same scope back then for selling off machines like this or parts. There wasn't a big market for it. Uh, most owners of these machines wanted them serviced and repaired by an IBM agent. Bear in mind that a fully spec version of this back in 1980 with all the options would cost you around $24,000. So that's equivalent to about $75,000 in today's money. So these were very expensive machines and they didn't want um, people that they, they just knew wandering around repairing them. Having said that, I did get eventually into a position where uh, I was repairing these for uh, companies that owned them on a fairly regular basis. Um, but also it meant that uh, I managed to acquire faulty items that they were uh, disposing of. And quite often these consisted of a chassis with lots of parts missing or a chassis that had the field, the faulty field replaceable units in them, so almost everything was faulty. Quite often they were fairly easy to repair, and so I would repair these and sell them and uh, make uh, quite a, a significant amount of money. Um, now, one of the things that cropped up in a previous video is I gave a very brief uh, rundown of a particular machine that I owned, and I got someone in the comments con uh, contradicting what it actually was. And that's understandable, this, you know, I, I appreciate comments, uh, they're all interesting to read. Um, but one of the things with machines like this is IBM in some ways were their own worst enemy in the way that they numbered parts and machines. And while they, in the uh, probably up to the mid 1970s, were mainly focused on big mainframe machines they started branching out and developing towards uh, personal computers. That is probably not what their intention was at the time. I think they were just trying to make these things smaller uh, and easier to, uh, to install and deal with. So they went through various phases of uh, trying to make small uh, desktop machines like this. I say small, it is, it is quite big. It's, it's about the size of a, uh, an old uh, television. Um, but as I say, it's incredibly heavy, and the forerunner to this was the, or the first one in that that uh, range really was the the IBM 5100. And I know that I'm going to get people contradicting what I'm saying here, but I'm basing this on what I actually saw at the time, 
I saw many of these when I actually dealt with. Um, and as I say, IBM has an unfortunate habit of uh, confusing model numbers. And unless you see all the information and the specs that are available, and you know what's inside them, it can get quite con confusing as to what particular machine you're looking at. Now, they went through the 5100, and they then developed the 5110. This is a 5110, and I'm going to get people saying, no, it isn't, but it is a 5110. The original 5110 looked very different to this, um, or at least it, it, it was a similar sort of um, layout, but it was uh, completely different in terms of its, um, its size and shape. This is actually a 5110-3, so it's a Model 3 of the 5110. And IBM marketed it as a 5120, so a lot of people will say this is a 5120, which it also is, but it's a 5110-3, and that is what the 5120 is. So if you, even, if you look at the service manuals, you'll see that the service manual for this says 5120 down the side, but then if you look in the centre, it's a 5110 Model 3. Now just to clarify this, we'll look at the back and I'll show you what the model number plate is on the back of this particular machine. Okay, so looking at the back of the machine, we can see it's an IBM 5120, but if you look at the actual model number plate, I don't know how clear this will be, it's, as I said, the lighting in here is not very good, um, but it's actually a 5110-3, and that is how they were marketed. It's, as I say, it's unfortunate in the way that um, IBM um, progress their model numbers and again the same thing is repeated here but it is a 5110-3 uh, aka a 5120 okay so it really depends on exactly what machine you're talking about in the progression of the IBM development line and this was all working towards and ended up as IBM AT machines and that was the machine I was showing in the previous video, but it was there were several model numbers between them. Um, but once you got to a certain point and you started getting the IBM cases, they started to standardise in the uh, the motherboard, and that's how you could swap different things into the cases. So the board and the cases in later machines didn't always give a very good indication as to what the machine actually was. So I'll just flip this back round and we'll have a, a quick look at the front again. Okay, so looking at the front again, just to keep things simple, I'll refer to this machine as the 5120, uh, and I'll do that for the rest of the videos in this series. But just bear in mind that if you're looking at documentation, it's say 5110-3. Uh, also, if you have the service information, be fairly cautious when reading through it, the way that IBM tended to construct their service documents was to use the base number such as 5110 and then they'd have a separate document, a logic document and a service document that gave you information that was specific to the particular model number, not just the base number. So it can get confusing as to which particular machine you might be looking at. But as I say, this is 5120 and that's how I will refer to it from now on. But um, if you do find any documents that say 5110-3, then it's the same machine, or fundamentally the same machine. There were various upgrades to these over the, uh, the production period, which wasn't very long. So these machines were released about 1980. As I say, they were very expensive at the time, uh, well beyond the scope of anyone like me to buy them new. So I never had a new one. Um, I did work on um, some fairly new ones. I worked on ones that had a lot of use, and I collected a number that ultimately I, I sold off. I'd never really kept one of these for my own use. I played with them. You could also get external tape drives. I did a lot of work on those as well. Um, so these tape drives are 1.2 megabyte and you can get an external dual drive unit as well. They had around 32k of RAM. They had a, a, a pretty much a custom IBM uh, processor and they got a nice, uh, I'd say, modular arrangement inside but it does make them very heavy. So the idea with this, it's going to be a bit more of a significant uh, project than uh, a Wren or, or a Tiger, where this is more uh, intended to be a restoration rather than just a repair. I haven't powered this up yet. 
If you notice the mains cable had been cut off so I've got no idea when this was last powered up um, but as, as ever I'm not going to switch it on until I've um, had a look inside and determined that it's safe to do that. Even so I'll still power it up in stages so I'll start with the power supply make sure that's working and then connect the various components to it and hopefully we'll ultimately end up with um, a working machine. There are some parts missing off it, some fairly minor parts as far as I know. I don't know if any parts are missing from inside. I haven't taken the cover off yet. Luckily the cover is in very good condition. It needs a really good clean, but it's, um, it's in excellent condition. Considering the weight of this machine, it quite often results in them being fairly badly damaged. But um, I've had a cursory look around this one and it seems fine. This is not broken, this, this handle, it's this knob, it's supposed to be like this, so you can tell them apart. Um, so you have one with the lip on and one without. Uh, the only thing that um, I'd like some help with, uh, well firstly if you have any documents relating to this range that are always useful to have, so if you have anything specific to this range of machines, or really any other IBM machine, I'd be very interested in it. Um, but also we're missing a key, so if anyone has one or knows where I can pick one up that will match, then uh, please let me know. Um, but as I said, this will probably be quite a long um, series of videos. If there's anything in particular you want to look at in detail while I'm doing this then please let me know. Um, but as I say it will be done um, carefully step by step so uh, as we go along again any questions that pop up, any information uh, that you want or any information that you have that you can pass on then um, please leave a comment.